If you told me earlier this year that two of my favorite movies of 2022 would be horror, and that they were filmed together back to back in secret and released just a few months apart on a minuscule budget of a combined $2 million, I'd have figured you were a magical being I saw during a cough medicine adventure. As it turns out though, that's exactly what happened. Not the cough medicine thing. X and Pearl are original films that are also a love letter to films past. Far from the standard nostalgia bait crap we see in modern day blockbusters, these creepy and compelling horror flicks are slow burn delights, anchored by my favorite performance I've seen all year by our lead Mia Goth. Performance? I meant performances. I'll get back to that, but I can't heap enough lavish praise on what she's accomplished here. She's simply phenomenal. With an upcoming third film in development, if it can maintain the same level of quality, this might end up being one of the greatest trilogies in the history of the horror genre. The critical response has been better than the audience ratings for Pearl, and I suppose it does lean in more toward a critic pleaser, but for my money, I'm already excited to revisit both of these movies. The films are the opposite of The Rings of Power, for example. A show that wants to remind you of better films like Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings so badly, while also desperately wishing to appear original, all the while failing at both. Here, with X and Pearl, both of which written and directed by Ty West, are crafty when it comes to weaving in their themes, and excel at showcasing love for their horror genre predecessors through cinematography and story concepts. Standing on the shoulders of pioneering filmmakers like Toby Hooper, who directed the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they stand on their own especially in the censored, safe space world we live in in 2022. X is set in 1979, during the rise of home video, which in turn leads to the unavoidable rise of the pornography video market. We follow a group of characters planning on making an art house style skin flick in hopes that it'll eventually lead them to fame and fortune. They end up filming the movie at a barn they've rented for the weekend from an elderly farm couple, and the creepy craziness ensues. X's follow-up, Pearl, takes place in 1918 in Texas during World War I and in the middle of the Spanish flu sweeping the country. It's a prequel to X that follows that film's antagonist at a more vulnerable, but certainly not innocent, time in her life. The Spanish flu and World War play as a backdrop to the film, and while I'm pretty sick of any commentary or even mention about the disease that rhymes with bloated lime lean, the movie thankfully avoids doing anything like that. X and Pearl have obvious and intentional similarities, their underlying themes being the most prominent. Both films smartly examine sexuality and religion-induced repression of human nature. Our lead character in X is Maxine, whose father is a pastor that's kept her in the safe confines of religious purity. The antagonist of both films is Pearl, who ostensibly is an older reflection of what Maxine's life could be like if she doesn't escape her religion-induced prison. I will not accept a life I do not deserve is a repeated line by the main characters of both films, as Maxine and Pearl's life stories up to that point parallel until they eventually crisscross. The whole world is gonna know my name! Say it, now. I will not accept a life I do not deserve! I do not deserve! Now, I know this might come as a surprise to some folks who apparently think I have an issue with female lead characters. Despite the fact that over half the movies I've given a positive review so far on the channel are female-led films. So if you'll indulge me, I'll take some time away from being an incel who lives in his mother's basement slamming my winky between two Bibles once an hour to talk about Mia Goth. She's absolutely fucking outstanding as our lead characters in both these films. She plays Maxine as well as Pearl, and I wasn't aware that she plays the elder Pearl in X. It's clearly someone underneath the prosthetics, but I had no idea at the time that I was watching her play a dual role in the movie. Throughout, she's essentially playing three characters, Maxine, the Elder Pearl, and Pearl's younger self. The fun starts immediately in X where I wasn't sure which character was the lead at first. If you go in not knowing anything, and too late now if you're watching this review, you might feel there's a bit of misdirection on who's the lead because one character seems like the obvious choice, but the script is way too smart for that. Maxine seems like a shallow, ditzy, naive girl at first until you realize why she's so important and why she becomes an obsession for the Elder Pearl, who quite literally sees herself in Maxine both physically, sexually, and in her hopes and desires. It's the power of beauty. I was a dancer in those early years. In Pearl, Mia Goth gets to fully take the reins as our central focus, and fuck yes does she deliver. She's odd, disturbing, and there's just something not quite right with Pearl, and she knows it. We pity her, and I can even understand how some might relate to her wishes and desires. 
She wants to escape her boring, predetermined life where she has to take care of her sick father and obey her religious mother. But yeah, she gets real fucking weird and creepy about it. Mia Goth also apparently plays a part in the smut film her character is introduced to in Pearl, essentially taking on four roles. She also co-produced the film and co-wrote it with Ty West, and I'm just so impressed with everything she's done here. There's a scene in Pearl's third act that is a prolonged monologue that feels like it goes on forever. The camera never cuts away. It's a single take of acting prowess, and she had me in the palm of her hand, along for the ride with her pitiful, twisted character. Not giving anything away here, when the credits roll, they're in front of Mia Goth's Pearl smiling at the camera for their entirety. Never cutting away in a truly disturbing look at a wildly intriguing character. It's Mia's world and we're just living in it, folks. It's my performance of the year and I absolutely cannot wait to see what she does with the third installment of this trilogy. Sexuality and slasher films have always gone hand in hand. If you're privy to any sort of pop culture, you're surely aware of the classic tropes of the 70s and 80s slasher genre. That the characters who have sex are murdered while the virgin final girl is the lone survivor of the sadistic killer. While that trope varies from film to film, in a cultural sense it's been commented on and analyzed for decades. Yes, we're talking about trashy, slashy schlock films, usually like the original Friday the 13th movies. Movies that I adore, by the way, because I take them for what they are, but there's plenty of documentary out there analyzing why they've remained successful for decades, and why they've had such a seismic cultural impact. Ty West takes that meta-concept and adds real depth and weight to it, by showing our characters actually experiencing it instead of being a meta-undertone. It's not on the nose, either. It's done with style and much more show-don't-tell storytelling than something entirely through exposition. I was pleasantly surprised how much the films had me talking after viewing them. There's a lot that's open to interpretation, but not in a pretentious way. Both films smartly weave a relatable story of the necessity and inevitability of teenage rebellion that shines a light on the vacuousness of the desire for celebrity status with a character study involving intense psychosis. It's fucking brilliant. The tension in both films rises slowly, but is masterfully crafted. The kills in the movies are vicious, and I found that the tension building around them was often more disturbing than even the high-quality gore. I know it's hard to believe that kind of talk regarding a horror movie, but let's not pretend like horror can't be a groundbreaking genre sometimes. Pearl is a bit more of a slow burn than X, but when the film concluded, I was shocked at how fast it went by. I realized just how engaging the movie was to keep me so locked in. The tension was palpable at times, and Mia Goth just kept my eyes locked on the screen with her performance. Ty West and Mia Goth have created a disturbing, twisted, and intriguing duo of movies that are going to come to a climax with the inevitable release of the third movie in the series, Maxine. A love letter to films past while providing an intensely interesting look at the vacuousness of Hollywood dreams, religious suppression, and teenage rebellion gone wrong, X and Pearl are simply outstanding films that might not be to everyone's taste, but they sure as fuck are to mine. And Mia Goth deserves every bit of praise she's been receiving, and then some. Bring on the finale. Till next time, GG's!